What's up and welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jay and I've been selling mostly t-shirts by way of print on demand, also known as POD, for over 10 years now. And I've spent the last seven of those years helping people for free in my Facebook group and most recently in my super cheap Inner Circle Coaching membership. I've sold over 100,000 t-shirts on Amazon Merch and I've done over a million in revenue on Etsy, all with a very, very limited amount of listings. If you caught part one of my series on developing a success mindset for your POD business, then you already know how important my mindset is to your success. If you missed it, watch it after this one. Today, we're diving into part two where I'll share five more key points that'll help you stay focused, motivated, and on the path to success. So please like and subscribe and let's get right into it. First up, let's talk about building a routine that supports productivity. Having a solid routine is like having a roadmap. It guides you through your day and helps you stay on track even when distractions pop up. The key is to create a routine that works for you and aligns with your natural energy levels. If you're a morning person, start your day with the most important task when you're fresh and focused. And if you're more of a night owl, plan some of your heavy lifting from later in the day. Make sure your routine includes dedicated time for key business activities like designing, marketing, customer service, but don't forget to schedule breaks in there somewhere too. Taking regular breaks helps prevent burnout and keeps your mind sharp. Now here's where it gets real. Overloading your schedule can lead to frustration and stress. Instead, focus on a few key tasks that actually move your business forward. For example, committing to creating and listing that one new design you've had on the back burner because you've been overwhelmed or truthfully just a sucker for shiny object syndrome like the rest of us. Another example could be dedicating a specific time each day to respond to customer messages or reviews instead of letting them pile up and become overwhelming. Or finally diving into that niche research for your next series of designs instead of just jumping from one half-baked idea to the next. At the end of the day, review what you've accomplished and adjust your plan for the next day if needed. And here's a little tip. Start your day by tackling the most challenging tasks first. This is often called eating the frog which presumably is because it's probably the absolute most disgusting and grossest challenge you could probably start any day with. Anyway, it'll help you build momentum for the rest of the day because you've got that massive victory under your belt, right? Plus, once that big task is out of the way, everything else just feels a lot easier. It's the same principle that my cousin in the military told me was the basis for making sure that everyone started their day with making their beds. It's not just some random chore. It's a simple way to kickstart your day on the right foot. By making it a part of your morning routine, you set a positive vibe that carries you through whatever the day throws at you. It's a small win that makes sure you've already accomplished something, no matter what curveballs the rest of the day can actually throw at you. Second, let's dive into cultivating a growth mindset. A growth mindset is the belief that your abilities and intelligence can be developed with effort, learning, and persistence. It's about embracing challenges, learning from criticism, and finding inspiration in the success of others. In the POD business, a growth mindset is essential because it helps keep you open to learning and improving. Instead of seeing obstacles as roadblocks, you start to see them as opportunities to grow. For example, if your designs aren't selling as well as you'd hoped, instead of thinking, I'm just not good at this, a growth mindset would prompt you to say something more like, what can I do to improve? Maybe I need to refine my niche, maybe zoom out a little, or maybe experiment with different styles, fonts, and colors. Another key aspect of a growth mindset is viewing your time and effort spent as a path to mastery. I mean, let's face it, building a successful POD business takes real work, but with a growth mindset, you see every challenge, every late night, and every learning curve as a step to becoming better at what you do. Practice makes progress, and you will get better. Instead of just saying, I need to make better designs, for example, break that down so you know what that would entail. Like understanding typography, for example, which is knowing the hows, whys, and when to use certain fonts in certain ways. Then there's understanding how balance is crucial to the impact your design has with your customers. Things to consider with balance are contrasts, like using different font sizes and colors to create maximum contrast and balance. And of course, understanding how colors impact our emotions and can even evoke physical reactions. Like yellow can make us feel energized and green is associated with freshness and red can increase blood flow and stimulate your appetite. It's no secret why some of the world's biggest food chains use red and yellow in their logos. This is all stuff I cover in detail in my Inner Circle membership and on that note, we're actually reopening September 19th and it's only $37 a month with no commitments and no strings. So if you wanna get on the wait list now, you can check out the link in the top comment down below and see all of what's offered and even see some testimonials from real members getting real results. Spots are limited because Q4 is the time to get to work and I do not want to be orienting new members in October, November. It's 
it's also not for everyone. So please don't just sign up because it's cheap if you're not actually going to do all the things because then you're just actually wasting both of our time and your money, however little it might be. You're also going to need to be able to take criticism so that you can get your wins as fast as possible, which brings me to the next point. Criticism is another area where a growth mindset can make a massive, massive difference. So instead of getting you know defensive or discouraged when you receive feedback, try to see it as valuable information that can help you improve. For instance, if a customer leaves a review saying they weren't thrilled with the print quality or the design, don't take it personally. Instead, use that feedback to refine your process and deliver a better product next time. Treat it as an opportunity to educate your prospective and hopefully future customers who happen to be reading the reviews to see whether or not they'll trust that they'll get what they're promised. And finally, a growth mindset allows you to find inspiration in others' successes instead of feeling threatened by it. Seeing other POD sellers doing well isn't a sign that you're failing. It's a reminder that success is possible even in the biggest niches and that there's plenty of room for everyone, especially in those big niches. Cultivating a growth mindset means you're constantly learning, adapting, and improving. It's about seeing challenges as opportunities, effort as necessary, and feedback as helpful. And with this mindset, you'll just be tougher in general. You'll be more motivated and ultimately more successful in your POD journey. All right, let's move on to the third one, which is the importance of continuous learning and adaptation. I know it's a mouthful. But in print on demand, things change fast. Design trends shift, new tools and platforms emerge, customer preferences evolved. Even if you want to stay ahead of the curve, you got to be committed to learning and adapting continuously, even if it's an evergreen niche that you're in. There's no set it and forget it button. First off, staying up to date with industry trends is crucial. This means regularly checking out what's trending in design, colors, and niches. You can use tools like Pinterest, Instagram, Google Trends, and even Facebook groups dedicated to your niche to see what's hot right now. But don't just stop at what's popular. Try to anticipate where trends are heading and how you can be an early adopter and maybe even create a trend of your own. Another aspect of continuous learning is improving your skills. Whether it's learning how to use design software more effectively, understanding SEO better, or getting a handle on social media marketing, there's always something new to learn. Online courses, membership coaching groups, and even tutorials right here on YouTube can be great resources. So dedicate time each week to learning something new that can help you improve your POD business. Adaptation is equally important. Let's say a new POD platform comes out that everyone's talking about, like the new Printify Amazon integration. Don't be afraid to explore it, but also be ready to adapt your strategy if it doesn't work for you. The Amazon customer, for example, who values speed over quality is a very different one than the Etsy shopper who will easily disregard pricing and prioritize quality. Or maybe you notice that your customers are starting to prefer eco-friendly products. So instead of resisting change, you can adapt by offering designs on sustainable materials like Printify's eco-friendly phone cases. So learning and adaptation go hand in hand. And as you learn new things, you'll naturally start to adapt your business to stay competitive. The key is to stay curious and open-minded and don't get too comfortable with what you know or how you're doing things. There's always a better way. There's always a new approach or a different angle that can take your business to the next level. Like why you shouldn't push your listings to Etsy. It's an old video, so please go easy on me on the quality critique tip. One final tip on that note is to set aside time regularly to review what's working and what's not working in your business. This will allow you to adapt your strategy based on real data and experience, keeping your business fresh and open to natural change. Fourth up, surrounding yourself with a supportive community. Running a business can feel pretty lonely at times, especially when you're a solopreneur. But here's the thing, no one succeeds alone. Having a community of like-minded people who understand what you're going through can make a huge difference. A supportive community provides encouragement when you're feeling down, advice when you're feeling stuck, and a place to celebrate wins, no matter how big or small. It's also a great way to bounce ideas around and get feedback from people who just get it. There are a few ways to find or build your community. One option is to join online forums or Facebook groups dedicated to POD or entrepreneurship. These spaces are filled with people who are on the same journey as you and they're often eager to share their experiences and support one another. And if you're looking for something a little more structured and personalized, consider joining my Inner Circle membership. It's a place where you can connect with others in the POD world, get direct support from me, and tap into a network of people who are all working towards similar goals. The value of being part of a community like this cannot be overstated. 
motivated. It can keep you motivated, provide accountability, and help you stay on track. Remember, it's easy to feel super isolated when you're running your own business, but you don't have to go it alone. Surrounding yourself with people who believe in you and your vision can be incredibly empowering. Plus, being a part of a community helps to keep you grounded and reminds you that you're not the only one facing challenges. So whether you join an online group, find a mentor, or become part of my inner circle, just make sure you're connecting with others that can help lift you up and stay focused on your goals. Let's wrap it up with some success stories from real POD entrepreneurs who've thrived by cultivating that right mindset. Hearing about others' journeys can be incredibly inspiring and reassuring, especially when you're facing challenges in your own business. One such entrepreneur I know started their POD journey about five years ago with a passion for designing quirky, niche-focused t-shirts. Initially, they struggled to gain traction because their designs were so specific that they only appealed to a very small audience. I know, right? Niche down, niche down, niche down. It's all you ever hear on YouTube, right? Well, sometimes that ultra low competition just doesn't have enough demand to pay the bills. So instead you need to zoom out. Instead of targeting boat mechanics, target all mechanics. Or instead of targeting music teachers, try targeting teachers in general. The rationale is that there's only one or two music teachers in a school staff of maybe upwards of 100 people. But that 100 staff is probably made up of 70 or 80 teachers who would have been ignored or missed. Now instead of doubling down on what wasn't working, they decided to finally take my advice and zoom out a little. They spent time really understanding their target audience, tweaking their messaging, keeping it simple, and ensuring that their designs resonated deeply with that group. And by day four, their first new design had sold. Another story involves a POD seller who faced repeated setbacks with suppliers. Those wrong products, delays, even issues with quality control. Instead of letting those challenges derail their business, they took a proactive approach. They researched, tested multiple suppliers until they found ones that met their standard. But they didn't stop there. They built strong relationships with these suppliers to make sure that they had open communication and more of like a collaborative approach. This persistence not only improved their product quality, but also allowed them to offer a level of customer service and support that set them apart from the competitors. And today they're thriving with a reputation for reliability and quality that keeps customers coming back. Hi, it's me. I'm the POD seller I just told you about. For more real successes though, you can check out a bunch of actual screenshotted wins from my inner circle members at the bottom of the sign up page. That's the power of mindset. Whether it's the determination to carve out a space in a niche market or the resilience to overcome operational challenges, the right mindset can turn obstacles into opportunities. The takeaway here is that its success doesn't just happen overnight and it doesn't happen without setbacks in real work. But with the right mind, those setbacks become stepping stones to success. So as you continue on your POD journey, remember how important having the right mindset actually is to your success. Make a plan, stay resilient, keep learning, and never underestimate the value of a strong, positive mindset. If you missed it, you can catch part one of this two-part mini-series right here. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one.